What are the mem memory management challenges? So the, the big challenge that you have is really this um, contention between or balance between soundness and completeness. For the programmer, ideally, you don't want to do anything. Right? You don't, you would perhaps would just like your program to magically figure out every piece of memory, whether you need it or not. But as we know, that is not always ideal in every situation. So it really depends on what kind of program you have. So how do you balance what you care about? So at where, with respect to memory management, the first thing we need to think about is we are balancing soundness and completeness. So what is the impact of a soundness failure? So when do we care about soundness? Well, if you think about it, soundness has an impact on, um, if it has a low impact, right? So if you don't really care about whether you doing a mistake on whether or not certain memory, uh, you, you claim that cer a certain piece of memory was not um, allocated and some other code might still be using, which could lead to a crash of your program. If that is not a problem, then perhaps manual memory management would not be, would be a good choice. In memory management, when you do manually, you incur the problem of soundness, right? Because you, the programmer, has to figure out whether I should be doing a free or not. If you do any kind of mistakes, um, then you have a soundness failure. If this is a low problem, you know, if, if it's not really a crucial, critical uh, program, maybe that's not a problem, right? Maybe it's just something that you can debug and the stakes are low. So then using manual memory management, then perhaps it's fine. So what about a completeness? So a completeness failure happens if, for instance, a very incomplete memory management is one that never reclaims its memory. So if it never reclaims its memory, then you have a completeness problem. If you have a lot of memory, that is not a problem. That, so the impact of that is low and therefore choosing automatic is quite good so if you if you think about um, classes of programs that choose manual management and these are things like c plus plus or c uh, programs the impact of soundness is low so what that means is my program if it's maybe a program, uh, maybe a game, I would say, I should say, if it's a game, the impact of having a few bugs that crash a game are lower than if your game uses so much memory that is not even able to run on a computer. Conversely, if you are running something in a server and you have money to spare, you really don't care whether it uses five gigabytes of RAM as long as the results it is producing are um, good. So it's not crashing because the, the program is not crashing in your server because of some incorrect free. And it's not creating um, a security escalation problem because of a missing free. So if you can sacrifice soundness that means your program will surely be safer but it will might have a problem of using more memory right Th those are the two so is is this critical software no maybe manual is fine is this um software you really care about in terms of safety in terms of not crashing in, in terms of not being exploited then perhaps you can sacrifice a bit of completeness and choose for set automatic. So then, of course, there are some other implications that are ob more obvious, right? Uh, fully automatic has no programmer input, so that is easier to program, right? 
programmer doesn't have to do a thing regarding memory management. They can completely sidestep this issue. Whereas with manual, you have to think about that. So your program has to have additional instructions that are explicitly saying how I should operate or manage my memory. So in terms of profiling, manual is easier, right? Because you, you, the programmer has full control over when memory is being reclaimed. So therefore, it's explicit in the program. If you're profiling it, the execution of your program, it's very uh, easy to understand why, is it, why it's growing. Whereas if it's fully automatic, you really don't know how the runtime, the execution of the program, has implicitly some code that is handling memory management. What that code does, it's perhaps out of your control. So it's way harder to understand to profile the memory usage of an automatic program because it's implicit. So in terms of implementation, as you might imagine, manual is the way to go. It's way easier to implement manual memory management. It's still hard. Uh, implementing malloc correctly is not a trivial task, especially if you consider uh, multi-threading, right? Then it becomes really hard. But it's surely way simpler than implementing automatic memory management. Garbage collectors are some of the hardest or most intricate pieces of engineering that we have in software engineering. Additionally, you might be another concern might be whether my software requires human intervention. That is in the sense that um, is it okay to to add this programming this this ma does the programmer even know how to add the memory management if they do then then they should choose for manual if they don't automatic is so for for a novice programmer automatic memory management is way it's the way to go right so it's easy it's very close to this point where how easy it is to program So ideally, we want things to be automatic, but as we have a lot of evidence, uh, often it's still not clear how to do manual memory management properly. Sorry, automatic memory management properly. And that's why we have to choose. So in summary, memory, manual memory management can be very difficult to the programmer. Right? It's, but it can also be very efficient because the programmer knows exactly when a certain piece of memory, or, or there are at least situations where the programmer may know that. And if they know that and they have explicit manual control, then they can fully optimize the memory management of their program because they can fine tune it for their current usage. Whereas with automatic memory management, you have to figure that out for all possible programs. So another thing that is might be very important, is especially when you have uh, real-time problems, which have to deal with real-time is when you have to deal with some some physical device um, that is perhaps sensing data every x amount of seconds, or and you have deadlines in terms of time uh, that you have to reply. So if you space, um, space shuttles and all that stuff, they have a lot of devices that uh, require real-time real uh, programs. So you have certain amounts of time that you have to perform a certain action to be able to react to a certain thing. You cannot go over that deadline, otherwise you might uh, lose the whole um, Space Shuttle, for instance. So it, in those situations, and for instance in, in games where, um, where you don't want to have spikes of, you know, you have your program and you're playing online and let's say your, your favorite game is actually for some reason doing a memory management pass and everything stops and you, your program starts, your game starts lagging 
and you don't know why it's not because of the internet because you're not even playing online so why is that so in those cases having some system implicitly taking care of memory for you might actually be detrimental so memory management in those kinds of problems doing it fully automatically can be a big problem or even a complete impediment. You might not just be able to use automatic memory management because of that. So another issue that we talked about is how implementation of me memory management, manual memory management is easier. And I talked about how um, it's still not a trivial task to do memory management for multi-threaded code is very hard but garbage collection is even harder so you know if you're implementing your favorite favorite language maybe implementing mem manual memory management is easier although to be honest there are already some garbage collectors that you can use as libraries so you can include it in your favorite programming language that you're designing so yeah, as, as a programmer designing a program that uses, let's say, a language that has a ma manual memory management, you will have more code to maintain, and that could be a problem. So if you have um, a big company and you have, you have a large code base, that is a, a big plus, that's a big plus for automatic memory management, right? Fewer code, fewer headaches, right? fewer bugs. So in terms of maintenance, it's very bad to have manual memory. Also, ensuring correctness can be difficult and hazardous. You require tooling for that. Uh, essentially, you know, because the memory management software is not doing it for you, you have to do it. So you have to debug it. You have to figure out. Um, it's not very easy to do, and it's error prone. So your code will be more susceptible to bugs, security crashes, and so on. So if you ever heard of Rust, it's a very interesting programming language because it's kind of bending this spectrum of from manual to automatic. And Rust allows, as a, a very fancy compiler, um, that performs... So basically, you have um, a very easy way to implement manual memory management that is assisted by a compiler. So what that means is that you don't actually you don't actually write um, free and malloc in Rust, but you have to write your code in such a way where the compiler can do it for you in an explicit way. So you kind of define scopes, and that's where the memory is contained. But it's not um, the where it's freed, where memory is is uh, freed or reclaimed is explicit and, obvi and obvious to the programmer. So it's not up to the, the, the garbage collector to kind of do manual automatic ma memory management for you. So that's why I'm calling this assisted manual memory management. But it's a very interesting line of, of memory management that is being handled by Rust and, and now all other, langui other newer languages that are based on Rust. On the other end, you have automatic memory management. It's, it's great because you have less code to maintain. So for any big company, um, that's why big companies love automatic memory management languages, also known as managed languages, such as C Sharp or Java. Um, one, one great reason is because your code base is going to be easier to maintain. You have... Um, Memory management in terms of soundness is guaranteed. So when I say correctness here, I mean uh, soundness. So that means that you are, your code is not going to be trying to do, you know, freeze and mallocs. It's not going to be doing freeze on, on memory that it's still needed somewhere else. But it's way harder, as we talked about, to know for your program, for you as a programmer, to be able to have any control over when 
a certain memory region is being reclaimed or when when that even happens in throughout the execution of your program and from a programming language designer point of view it's way harder to implement garbage collection as we talked about so there are very interesting um, there is very interesting research being done in terms of memory management and as I've shown you before, Rust tries to do the approach from manual to automatic. Whereas, uh, for instance, these researchers are extending C sharp, so going from automatic to managed, to sorry, to manual. So what the what this paper that I recommend you to read on. So these are researchers from Microsoft Research who were who designed a way to be able to control very to explicitly control portions of memory and their access so it's kind of a similar idea to rust but implemented in a language with automatic memory management you still want that to be you still want memory management to be completely safe so memory safety uh, and also a digression rust is also memory safe so while it is manual you are not allowed to do you do not um, risk safe soundness with that with that programming language and in c-sharp they're doing the other way around they're going from automatic to manual um, and this is a very interesting paper on that subject so finally as a research problem one of the big, biggest difficulties is really handling um, parallelism and concurrency so by introducing parallelism you get concurrency and if you if you look at how programming language have been incorporating garbage collection so those would be the the two i would say the three more infamous cases are um python of course python is notably bad for multi-threading <laughs> so that's as a design they, they did a, a bad design choice and now they still are faced with it um, second problem is second infamous case is OCaml uh, which have been working on their parallel uh, OCaml ver called multi-core OCaml so in this programming language you've been trying to add a new concurrent garbage collector and they've been doing this for I don't know the past 10 years um, and of course, they want to do it in a way that maintains the level of quality that OCaml already has. So that's why it's hard to, that's why it's been taking so long. And another very famous um, case is that of Go, which has uh, just introduced a new garbage collector and their garbage collector is, um, or their advances in garbage collector the later version is pretty much all related to the new concurrency to better handling parallelism it's really really hard and most programming languages that have a garbage collector have to deal with this and big features of the programming language then is just oh we've implemented a new algorithm that is able to to handle to be faster for this kind of architecture it really depends on each um, processor architecture so Okay, so the biggest problem of garbage collection, and this is to say automatic memory management, is really the question of how do we know whether a piece of memory is, is ready to be reclaimed. And this is something you really cannot know in general. So what you have to do is things like look at um, how data structures are referring to each other. And we've seen, we've looked at our environments and we have those references from environment to environment. In our case, that's what we would have to look at if we want to do garbage collection. Um, so then, in general, a garbage collector has to do that kind of problem. Go through, usually what you do is you look at the problem as a graph, and then you, you are doing basically graph-based uh, algorithms. If you only have a single processor that's an easy problem to do and that's actually what you're going to do in your homework but as long as you have multiple 
processes, then it becomes a real problem because you have, you know, multiple things looking at this graph that is changing over time automatically. So it's really, really complicated to conclusively know whether something, um, some piece of memory is really done, is really um, not needed anyone. So what most naive garbage collection for multi-threading do is really stop the world approach. The stop the world approach is just going to halt all execution, take care of garbage collection, of memory management, and then resume operation. And as you might imagine, that's really bad for performance if you're doing uh, parallel computing, because you cannot, you know, you're, you're stopping the world to do something else that in a lot of cases, that's going to be a big problem. So technically there are um, two options for automatic uh, memory management that we're gonna study. One is based on reference counting and this is a simpler way of addressing the problem of memory management. And the second one is uh, via graph reachability and we're gonna study those two ways of performing memory man automatic memory management in the next few slides.